Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good, I'm great. <laughs> and I mean it. Interrupting my own video real quick, it's just the beginning so y'all don't know this. I filmed this video last night because it's like the only safe time to get away from the black flies. But real quick, I did want to make sure that the beginning of this video had a quick rundown on this plant for people who aren't looking for an in-depth care video, who just want to know, can I grow it? So, broadly, just general care for the majesty palms. They like a lot of light, a lot of water, a lot of humidity, a lot of warmth. Does that sound like a great house plant to you? Not to me. They're very common. Maybe you have the conditions in your home to pull that off. I know I don't. Most people don't. The biggest issue people usually have with them is browning tips. The tips of these leaflets here, the pinnae, they turn brown because they like a lot of humidity. More humidity than is easy to pull off in the house. But as long as they're given those things, they can do all right. And even average household temperatures are okay for them. They're just not really gonna flourish. They'll just kind of like chill. And that's only for a while too. Eventually they're gonna want to be stepped up and they blow over very easily. I'm about to repot these. That's gonna be a whole different video. But like I said, I just want to step in real quick with that little note for people who just want to know very quickly, can I grow this? Do I want to grow this? Personally, I think Majesty Palms, not the best candidate for a house plant if you're looking for a palm tree. Kentia Palms are the best, but like unbelievably expensive. These are cheap. They propagate from seed very quickly. They grow quickly as well for, I mean, a palm tree. And that's up until they get to be a certain size and their growth will slow down. That was it, just the basic for people who just wanted a quick, will this do well for me? That's that, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut back into the video for it's more about like in-depth care for the Majesty Palm. Maybe for people who already have one, who need troubleshooting, I don't, I don't know. I'm basically just, I'm gonna stop talking now. So, so anyone who just popped in, wanted something real quick, there's that for you and everybody else move on. Finally getting around to talking about the majesty palms. Now caring for the majesty palm is simple but complex at the same time. There are a lot of variables that go into some of the factors with keeping them nice and healthy. The majesty palm, which is Revenia revelaris, native to Madagascar, not like my favorite, but they're really popular because they germinate fairly quickly from seed as far as palms are concerned. And because of that, you can pick them up fairly cheap. They're not terribly expensive. That depends on where you live. A pinnate palm with really pretty dark green feathery foliage. Not one that's typically going to trunk for you indoors, but if you have it for a long time and you do a really good job taking care of it, it can and will happen eventually. But they gotta put some size on first. As far as lighting goes, for a long time these were regarded as a shade loving palm, which isn't really the case. I mean, when they're smaller, just like all other palm trees for the most part, they can take less light because they're growing in the understory. In the house, however, they tend to do a lot better with a decent amount of sunlight. They're going to look a lot better in a very bright room, anywhere we want to keep them like one to five feet from a window, probably. In the house, bright light. Outside, they can be acclimated into full sun just fine, but they tend to bleach very quickly. So it's a process you want to take kind of slowly, smoothly move them out, give them a little bit more light like every couple of weeks until you move them into full sun. If where you pick them up from at that nursery, they're already sitting in full sun, you ask them, have you had these for a while? Then they say yes, and then it's probably okay to go ahead and just take it home, keep it in the sun. Like I said, they need that transition. If they're, they've are they been kept in the shade, they will bleach out very quickly. Bleaching out is when those fronds, the chlorophyll basically gets scorched, photooxidation is the term for that, and they die off. You get white basically within the foliage. They got sunburnt and that chlorophyll doesn't come back. You just cut that frond off. It, it's not going to do any good for the plant anymore. I have noticed a lot of literature, particularly online, has kind of backed off from calling these a shade loving palm, which is nice because I think a lot of people buy these and then they get them home. They follow the rules. They read what a lot of these sites say online. They're like, why isn't it doing well? Well, it's probably because it wasn't getting enough light. That's generally the problem that comes up the most when somebody asks me what's wrong with their majesty palm, I find out that it was getting like maybe an hour or two of light in the morning and it was like set in a corner far away from the window, which is sometimes necessary if you live someplace that's really, really cold and there are drafts and things like that. Give it light, give it as much light as you can and rotate the pot, I'd say monthly so that the plant doesn't start to lean or stretch in any kind of odd way. If you notice, like, it kind of looks like the fronds are bleached out here. That's just a reflection of the light, but I'm gonna go with it. If you notice something like that happening with the foliage and it's starting to get sort of white, it's losing that dark green color to it, 
then scooch it out of the light. Maybe it was too much or it got moved into it too quickly. It's not a plant that's going to do well in a dark room. Not for a very long time anyways. You probably pull it off for several months, but eventually the plant's gonna look pretty scraggly. Give them a nice bright room. They will appreciate it. These palms like water. They don't want to be sitting in water, but they don't want their soil to dry out, at least not for a very long time. During their active growing season, which is summertime, late spring through summer, that's when they're going to be growing the most. They're a true tropical, so they're always in an active growth state, but wintertime indoors, they're not going to be growing as much. That's, that's, I guess, what I was trying to get across. When the days are longer and there's more light outside, they're going to be growing more. They're going to want more water. And that's when I like to be sure to never let them dry out, basically. They, the top, you know, half inch of soil can dry out. It's best to have an evenly, consistently moist soil. The winter months, different story. Day lengths are shorter, there's not as much warmth, the air's typically a little bit more dry, but in general, in the winter months indoors, they do not need to be watered anywhere near as frequently. I prefer to let the top half inch to inch of soil dry out in between waterings. The reason I do this is that the plant's not in a state of like heavy, heavy growth. So there's no reason to keep it sopping wet. You can start to have issues with rot and um, anaerobic things going on in the soil, which isn't great for the roots. So reducing the watering makes it a little bit easier. Fertilizing. During the active growing period, like I said before, take that phrase with a grain of salt because it's a tropical. It should always be an active growth, but as a house plant, that's not the case. The day lengths are longer, temperatures are warmer, they're getting more light which is going to be typically mid to late spring through the majority of summer and some parts of the world, even throughout a lot of the fall time. That's when you want to fertilize. I don't fertilize these when I bring them inside. During the winter months, I don't do that. So an all-purpose palm fertilizer works really well for them. It only needs to be applied like probably every two months or so. My tropicals, palms, houseplants, pretty much anything that I bring outside for the summertime, I prefer to cut back on fertilizing within about six weeks to bringing them indoors. So for me, where I live, that would probably be they'd get their last fertilizing right around the first week of September. Because with plants that are very frost sensitive, they're going to be coming in around October 15th, probably. As far as temperatures are concerned, they do like a lot of warmth and a lot of humidity. I don't like to let them drop below 40, even though they can potentially go down much cooler than that. I'm talking Fahrenheit, by the way. That cold hardiness is somewhat dependent on the temperatures that are following the next day. And where I live, if temperatures are going to drop below 30, they're probably not warming back up into the upper 70s the next day. So it's just time to bring them in. They have a very thin, delicate foliage. It succumbs to frost very easily, very quickly. And it's just, to me, it's just a setback. May as well avoid it. So I prefer to move mine back into the house actually when temperatures at nighttime are dropping below 50. That way it's just a little bit less of a shock to them and keeps them looking a little bit nicer. And where I live, the fall time is usually pretty wet. So cold and wet, that's, that's a bad thing. Cold and dry, different story. But if it's raining and raining and raining and really cold outside, then that's just going to rot. It's not good for it. Okay, some things to look out for. As far as the fronds and foliage are concerned, Yellowing typically means that they've been getting a little bit too much water. Browning usually means not enough water. I've been looking around my yard to see if I have any palms that I can show off deficiencies with, which luckily, I mean, it's a good thing that I can't, but it would be helpful in this scenario. If you see yellow within the foliage and there's spotting in there, that's a metal deficiency. That deficiency will also cause the spears in the middle to come up kind of small, misshapen. There isn't always spotting with the manganese deficiency. If they're yellow and they're not being overwatered, and you notice that new growth is coming up kind of funky, it needs to be hit with a palm fertilizer, or I just, Epsom salt works fantastic. A few tablespoons in a gallon of water, do that every month, works wonderfully. But it's always important to remember that salts accumulate in the soil. So if that's being done, it's good to also give a flush through that soil occasionally too, probably every three to four months to heavily, heavily soak that, let it all, let the water run out the bottom of the pot, flush the salts out. And you can get the um, Mignese sulfate, works really well. But like I said, Epsom salt works fine too. Really useful for greening up the foliage and just kind of making the plants a little bit happier. As far as palms are concerned, they're a fairly fast grower. So I prefer to bump them up in pot size every single year, just by a couple inches. There are multiple reasons to do that. It's not just because they're a fast grower. It's because within time, with all house plants, within like probably 18 to 24 months, depending on your soil blend, the soil will start to compact and not drain as well. And they really do appreciate a well-drained soil. It needs to stay moist, consistently moist, but not waterlogged either. You notice that just the tips of the fronds, or the penne really is what these are called, these pieces right here, 
That's the penne. You notice that those are browning. That can just mean low humidity. Like I mentioned, they like warmth. They like light. They like humidity. When that becomes the case, which is very probable. A lot of places don't quite have the humidity to keep these looking perfectly green all of the time, at least indoors that is. You can do a very large pebble tray at the bottom that has water in it. Just make sure that the bottom of the pot's not actually in contact with that. That helps a little bit with humidity. With plants that are really, really tall, that doesn't help a ton because by the time th things, the evaporative humidifying happens, like a lot of that's been moved and not even affecting the foliage. But it helps. Best bet, really, just throw a humidifier near the plant. It's a lot easier. You can miss the foliage where, it could just be where I live, but I have noticed that misting the foliage sometimes results in spotting, which isn't that shocking. That happens with a lot of plants. Missing can be effective for certain things, and other plants, it's really not a great idea. I don't know if the spotting I have experienced with missing the plant has been because of my water. I do live in a place that has some alkaline water. It's fairly hard. I wouldn't really be surprised if that's why that was happening. The thing is, once that water evaporates right off the plant, then the, the, the humidity, that whole thing is over. So you give it like 15, 25 minutes of humidity, and then it's like, okay, air's dry again. So, like I said, a room with some humidity, humidifier, and a, if you have a really brightly lit bathroom, great place for them. The, it needs to be a pretty big bathroom, because these get pretty big. Like, really big. It's gonna be stunted somewhat in a pot and indoors, but they still, they grow fairly quickly. For what they are, at least. And that changes once they reach a certain size, too. A lot of palms will start growing fast when they're smaller, and then they hit a certain size, like, all right, I made it this big, I can chill now. They slow things down a little bit. Okay, pests and diseases, mostly just pests. They're prone to pretty much all the common ones. Scale, white fly, mealybug, spider mites, big problem. These have very, very, very thin foliage, which spider mites just love. Ways to avoid that being a problem is to keep the humidity up and the airflow up around the plant. Spider mites tend to not do as well with those types of conditions. It's important to stay on top of checking the foliage, running your hands through the penne, through the undersides, typically where they are. You'll be able to feel that webbing and everything on your fingers. It's, you know, okay, there's a problem there. If that happens, then if you have the ability to take it to like a shower and wash it off heavily, that's fantastic. And then spraying them down heavily with a uh, water, you put a few drops of dish soap in, works well. Neem oil works great. Just don't forget to stay on top of it and keep reapplying. Repotting. I like to repot yearly. That's as long as the pot hasn't been bumped up too much in size. And you can see here, this one doesn't really need a repotting. I picked this one up and several others for really, really cheap from my local big box store and uh, they don't look that great. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But you can see what's going on with those roots. This isn't root bound. They are a palm that likes to be root bound, which is true of most palm trees. I am going to go ahead and repot it anyways though, because I don't really like the soil blend that it's in. I use drip irrigation and that's gonna stay wet for too long with the drip irrigation. Actually more so when I move these inside for the winter time, I'm gonna want them to dry out a little bit more. I just don't want to have to worry about rot and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now. I'm, I'm just going to bump it back into the same size pot. Here I have an all-purpose potting mix that I've added a lot of sand to. This was a, let me see, this is a very large bag of potting mix. This is a 50-quart bag of potting mix that I've added an entire bag of sand to, which is like a, I think a 20-pound bag of sand. Slow release fertilizer, some espoma palm tone, a little bit of espoma biotone starter. Added a little bit of perlite to help even more with the drainage, and that's it. I know that sounds like a lot. So you can see I need to blend this up a little bit more, but I'm just, I'm losing light, so I'm speeding through this. But it's an organically rich soil that has a lot of sand in it. This is really important for the drainage. It'll hold on to moisture for a little bit. It's not going to dry out too fast. That's exactly what I want here. So then come in here, loosen some of that soil. This is not typically necessary. It's just this plant was severely over potted and I think it's going to be the case with the other ones, which I'll probably be doing off camera. Okay, and I am repotting this right back into its nursery can because I'm going to be using that nursery can to drop into these larger black planters that are very heavy and I don't want to move those in and out of the house. So I just will go ahead and lift them back out with the nursery can in the fall time. And that just makes much more sense that way, to me anyways. I'm gonna go ahead, drop this in here. I'm planting it up a little bit higher than it was. A really big thing with this is actually gonna be making sure that there aren't air pockets in here. So there's this entire cavity down here. That really could have been bad for this plant. When you have that cavity, the roots will start to air prune and die off. And then you have this big kind of bubble under there of decay and it can fester and it can end up killing the palm. All right, now I'm coming in and watering this in. It does need more soil, but I'm giving it a heavy watering. And now, instead of packing the soil in too much with my hands, this is actually gonna help move the soil around to help remove any bubbles that are in there. I'm gonna let that drain down. I'm probably gonna repeat this 
probably two more times and then I'll add more soil, finish filling in those holes. And I did want to mention, this is somewhat unique when it comes to repotting a palm, especially a majesty palm. Typically when repotting palm trees, I wait until they're fairly root bound. I wouldn't be removing very much soil at all and really not like any other plant. I don't usually manipulate the root ball too much, but something like a majesty palm, I don't typically even do that. I'll just pop it out of its pot. If there's a lot of circular motion on the bottom of the root ball, then I might lightly loosen that up a little bit, but I just bump it up to the next pot size. There are exceptions if they have noticed a lot of problems with the plant, particularly things like mealybug, if that's been an issue, any other type of pest that might be living down below the soil, then I might go ahead and try and get as much of the soil as possible and sterilize roots and everything. That's not, that's a whole different topic. Okay, this was also a unique repotting in the sense that this Majesty Palm actually has a little bit of woody trunk coming in on it, which is unusual for one this size, but that can just happen kind of how it was grown. You know, maybe it went through a stress period, died back a little bit, came back, and that change in the crown shape can cause that to happen. I went ahead, gave it another wash through, put my hands in there, still trying to fill in those bubbles. That trunk situation, I wanted to make sure that that was somewhat unburied. It's kind of hard to see here, but right in there. Didn't really want that fully submerged, don't want it rotting away. That also has this plant growing at kind of a wonky angle in full sun, however, that should straighten itself back out. You can kind of see the curve on the trunk there. It's a little bit weird, but like I said, that'll kind of bend back the way it needs to. At least it should, as long as it's not being lit mostly from one direction. Okay, it's getting kind of dark, but I did real quick want to cover picking out the palms and pruning. Like I mentioned, I got all these super cheap. They were kind of the last of the selection at the nurseries. And something I noticed with them, particularly this one over here, is that the grower really planted these down very deep. So did you see how far my hand was down there? That's about how far down the root mass is. I'm assuming they did that to help keep them from blowing around too much. That happens a lot. These guys, they go into the nurseries, they blow all over the place. It's how you end up with pots that are missing a lot of soil and having air gaps in them like this one. Ultimately, that will kill these plants. The soil should not be that deep up against the trunk. So that one's gonna get repotted too, which I would suggest doing. They like to be consistently moist, which I've mentioned multiple times. Consistently moist with six inches of the crown shaft, not really a trunk yet, but that crown shaft buried under the soil. Not a great idea. Move it into a heavy planter where it's not going to get blown around. That's probably the best way to keep it from falling over, not over planting it. Though I do typically like to assume that the growers know what they're doing. So maybe it's a new technique that works really well and I just don't know anything about it. That's possible. I don't know. From my experience, however, I would advise against it. You can see here, this one has a broken frond. Not a big deal. I went ahead and bought it anyways because I actually like the shape of this one better than all the others. You can see it's not over buried. There are some roots coming out the top, which is okay. I would still top dress that if the pot still has some squish to the sides. That means it doesn't really need to be repotted, but you may want to just put a little bit of soil on top of that. Like I said though, this one wasn't buried like the other one was. Actually, I mean, it may have been at one time and all the soil came out. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Not one bit, but you can see it. this one in comparison to the others has a much thicker body to it, more girthy, as opposed to this one, very thin, spindly, and then this one over here that was buried way too deep, which might be the case with the other one, and this one, which didn't have any soil directly below it. It's more than just that. The growth, the fronds on this one are much more upright and sturdy, which I really like. They're not fanned out quite as much, which isn't a bad thing for them to be fanned out, but when they have the same number of fronds, it probably means this one a little bit more of a sturdy plant than one that has similar foliage, but a little bit floppy and flaccid. Over time, as these grow, the fronds are going to start to unfurl just like this one's done right here, no matter what, but that's a little ways down the road as far as growing these. See where this is broken right here and right here? I'm going to first make a cut right there. Clean, sterile, sharp scissors pruners that is. And then I could just leave it like that. There's not much left on there. This plant has plenty of foliage, so I'm gonna go ahead, come on down very, very close in there and make my cut right in there. Heck, while I'm here, may as well fix this one. This one's sticking out a little bit too far for my liking. It still has plenty of foliage, so it's not a problem. Everything's fine. This one actually is really nice too. It's extremely full. There aren't a lot of broken fronds, but I speculate it's also overburied, just like the other one. Like I said, maybe that's fine. I don't know, but typically not great for a lot of palm trees to overbury them. Okay, that's everything in a nutshell. I'll be potting these up into these other planters, making them look nice. 
I will talk about companion planting and stuff like that with them, but I'm just gonna be dropping them in the nursery can inside there, filling the rest of the soil. That'll be a separate video. This is not really gonna be a care video so much about the majesty palm. And of course, it's pretty much impossible to remember everything in these videos, so comment down below. Make sure to fill in the gaps. Make any corrections you feel are necessary. Let me know your experience with them, because there are a lot of variables. Where you live can have a big impact, a fairly decent influence on how to take care of them. Drier climates, your latitude, altitude, all of those things. Does anyone have any favorite palm fertilizers? That would be a great thing to comment down below with because I've tried a lot and I, I haven't used one where I was like, oh, this is fantastic. That's never really been the case. Generally just like an all-purpose palm fertilizer it seems to work well. I'm using the Espoma Palm Tone because it's the only thing I have access to. There aren't like pre-made palm soil mixes and palm fertilizers where I live up in St. Louis. And it works, but I still make sure to add in the Epsom salts and things like that probably once a month during the summertime. When I, man, it's getting dark. When I have these all potted up and whatnot, that will be updates on my Instagram. I use that more than anything else. I have all the links down below for my social media. Like I said, comment down below. Let's talk about them. Get a conversation going. Hey, and don't forget, ew, Toby, stop drooling. Not that he can help it don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up helps a lot makes a big difference for the channel i really do appreciate it thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell because i upload multiple times a week and that way you know when new videos come out and lastly and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye